Now on this, uh, this map, uh, this uh, doesn't look that astounding, uh, I guess. I, I said it was very unique, but uh, uh, what you see here are squiggle lines all over the night sky that you find, and those lines are uh, maps of lines of constant brightness. It's like a uh, topographic map that you might see in, uh, in uh, uh, geology. And, but instead of being constant elevation, these are constant, constant brightness lines. And so you see these lines of constant brightness, and there is, in general, this pretty much uniform thing here, except in some areas here, it looks like there's concentrations. And if you plot this on a uh, galactic coordinate system, you find that these concentrated lines happen to be right at the center of the galaxy. Well, the very, very remarkable thing about Grote's observations is that this uh, uh, radiation and these concentrations of lines are not indications of bright sources, as you might expect at the center of the galaxy. It's a dim spot. You're looking down a well. And so what happens is, is that the uniform, that the, that the night sky at these very long wavelengths is uniformly bright and with dim spots at recognizable places like the center of the galaxy, rather than being a dark sky with bright spots. And this is a very remarkable observation indeed. One of the other remarkable observations is it is the level of the brightness. Uh, it's much, much brighter than anyone would have expected in making these observations at these uh, uh, long wavelengths. It's on the order, uh, well, the, if, if it were a temperature, a black body temperature rate of measurement, it would correspond to three and a half million degrees Kelvin. Now this is uh, in contrast to observations that are made at the uh, uh, microwave wavelengths, which people think uh, confirm the Big Bang Theory, uh, that uh, uh, would say that uh, the general background is only three degrees Kelvin. So he's making observations that show that, that, the, that this, this general background radiation is in complete disagreement with the idea that it's a leftover Big Bang radiation. And instead, it's, uh, it's, it's coming from the universe. It's coming from beyond our galaxy because the center of the galaxy uh, makes a dim spot in it. And it's uh, completely unexplained as to how, how, where, where is this coming from. Reber was very puzzled by this at first. And uh, this really caused uh, uh, Grote to uh, come up with the idea that uh, uh, has to be uh, an intergalactic gas that is generally glowing out there and where it's getting its energy from is from the Compton effect. And it's this reason for his long wavelength observations at the, of the general background radiation that has provided the evidence that um, uh, that the Compton effect causes the shift. And Reber, independently of me, came up with a paper that was published within a, a month of mine that said the same thing. The redshift is due to the Compton effect, and it's not due to, to the Doppler effect. And, um, uh, uh, and his reasons were entirely different from my reasons. My reasons had to do with quasars. This has to do with observations of the very long wavelengths and the general background radiation. Uh, well, of course, this idea that the Compton effect causes a redshift is very, very controversial. And uh, most scientists don't believe it. They say, but if the Compton effect were causing the redshift, those photons have to get deflected in order for that to happen. And so the, uh, the light from the distant object would have to get blurred. It would have to start to spread out over the sky because that, uh, the light is, is, uh, is being blurred like that little droplets around a, a uh, fog droplets around a, a, a street light and it would spread out over very large areas of the sky and you couldn't see it at all. And the spectral line should also, by the same uh, uh, reasoning, ought to also be blurred and it shouldn't appear to be nice uh, observable individual spectral lines. And, and uh, we made arguments that say, well, that's not necessarily so. It could be that the, that, uh, uh, the scatter per individual uh, electron is uh, uh, a very small one and uh, it tends to scatter back into the line of sight and the blurring wouldn't occur. And Reber, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, made a computer model that uh, showed that uh, from a random walk analysis that the photons don't uh, cause blurring and that uh, it stays within the observed blur circle. So that uh, there is a, an observed blur circle when you photograph a star and, 
and uh, uh, the the and anyway, this went on and on. It was quite a quite a lengthy controversy, and until uh, very recently, uh, most people wouldn't really believe that the Compton effect would cause the red shift. And the thing that has uh, converted people now has been the discovery of dispersion in these extragalactic sources. Well, what is dispersion? Well, it's time for a little audio <laughs> uh, break in this here. And that is that uh, uh, there has been discovered an extragalactic uh, object uh, called a pulsar. Now, pulsars are things that have been observed uh, fairly recently that uh, 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 pulse at a constant, very, very constant uh, uh, time. They, uh, uh, every second or every tenth of a second, depending on which one you look at, uh, they will give a uh, beep, 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 beep. It sounds uh, something like this. Uh, it's a very regular beep. And, and uh, the models of what causes this uh, are uh, really not germane to this discussion, but uh, as of interest, they're thought to be neutron stars that are spinning and have a, uh, a, uh, a beacon that comes around and flashes across the sky every time it, it rotates. And that's thought to be probably one of the best models of, of, uh, of this. Uh, and almost all the pulsars that have been discovered have been objects that are in our own galaxy. They tend to show concentration along the galactic plane. And, and it's no doubt uh, in everybody's mind that they're associated with objects that, that are really in our own galaxy. But Reber suggested that uh, if we should ever find a pulsar uh, outside our galaxy, that the uh, uh, pulsar would have uh, dispersion in its source. In other words, uh, instead of being a constant beep, 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 it would sound uh, a little something like uh, like that. Now, the difference between uh, and is dispersion. What happens is that the, the longer wavelength, now this is done in, in, in sound and not in light, but this uh, uh, is that the longer wavelength uh, radiation tends to trail the, the, the ordinary radiation. And that's because it, it travels through the medium slightly slower. Uh, and so it goes brrr, brrr. And so the longer wavelength trails the, the, the pulse is given off at the same time, but the longer wavelength comes later. And that's because the light is interacting with the intergalactic medium. The discovery of this dispersion in these sources proves that the light is interacting with the intergalactic medium. It was not, the dispersion in the extragalactic source M87 is 250 times that of the dispersion found in the galactic sources. So it uh, uh, now shows proof that there is a medium between the galaxies and that the light is interacting with it. And since the only interaction that can occur uh, in the medium, and the medium has to have the electrons to cause the dispersion, uh, is the Compton effect. It must be that the, that the Compton effect is causing the red shift. And so this is why the Big Bang is on such very, very shaky ground. The expanding theory of the universe uh, is ending not with a Big Bang, but with a whimper from an extragalactic pulsar. Well, uh, these uh, ideas that the Big Bang is not causing uh, the red shift, or that the red shift does not do the Doppler effect, hasn't got anything to do with gravity yet. And it's time to now begin to talk about what kind of model of the universe do we have as a result of uh, this idea that the, that the uh, universe is not expanding.